Good morning, P. How was your week? But really solid. Um, I just kind of wrote out some stocks that I bought a long time ago, and they just kept going up. <laughs> so, uh, kind of a, uh, it was sort of a lo- longer portfolio week for me, or you know, getting out of some swings. Um, had some, had some, a couple day trades pop off pretty good. Um, SMCI on Friday uh, didn't catch the move Goosted, I, but I did you know catch a decent move on that. And um, yeah, it's just really uh, one of our big thesis points was about semiconductors. So kind of rode that um, and then just a lot of studying oil and old a few other things. But, uh, but yeah, solid week overall for me. Nice, nice. I um, <clears throat> said, said last week that I was kind of selling those smaller positions on a lot of stuff. Um, the, the ones that I was keeping, I want to keep around. I was adding to this week because they were all in the spot where you you know, the, the thesis says to buy. Um, yeah. It didn't really trade too much outside of those overreactions. Um, those seems like the, I mean, there's like three or four plays that I, I just posted dollar amounts. Like, that's too cheap. If it gets below that, it's just too yeah, cheap. Yeah, yeah. And just, I mean, if you know how to scout pennies, it's not hard. Uh, especially with, you know, less volume. Um, right. and, then, and then lastly... Yeah, you know, you thought my account looked good when the video was at 500. How do you think it's looking at six? So I'm trying not to, <laughs> not trying to mess that up much. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on a, Microsoft is mine that's like that. Um, not, not to that extent, but I have a, an average. I have an average on Microsoft we might never see again. That's kind of how I'm feeling about that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so on the a, a large cap that acted like a penny was uh, Humana. Mm-hmm. I've been... 14% on increased medical expenses uh, recovered 7% of that move the next day. And on the option side, given how the IV works on stocks like that, um, that trade did extremely well. And that, that pretty much made my week on as far as options trading goes. And uh, when I get a big, big win on options, um, especially if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of step back from those lately um there's just uh you can kind of keep going back to the well if i have something that's a setup i like Uh, but you know i just i just size down i just instead of looking at it as daily goal it's more like a weekly goal for me and then i just hit it as soon as i can and then you know back out of it because even if you're good at it you know you options will eat you up if you make a mistake for one thing and um, the other thing is, it's just a more stressful kind of, kind of trading. And I don't really see a reason to pile that on myself every single day. So that's that's been a change for me over the past year. Um, just more, I'm more comfortable with that. Um, and, uh, you know, part of it too, is it's kind of, conf- you know, confidence in the work of the things that are going to work share side. And even if they're not going to work the next day, you know, you just have your spot. You've seen it play out so many times now that, uh, you know, you just, you just add in the zone and you wait, you let the trade work and, uh, letting the trade, giving the trade time to work works best with shares and period. Yeah. But when you talk, I always try to take a couple notes so I don't miss things and the got to work backwards here on this one, but the goal, the weekly goal, you said that kind of stood out and, uh, you know how I am. Larger time frames, larger time frames. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, like it just in a good, good mental thing. Like two hundred bucks a day. Most people, that's not that's not getting you jumping up off the chair, right? You're not jumping up, fist pumping, right? Going outside, lighting your yeah. victory cigar. You're just not. So, thousand bucks a week. You're like, all right, I had a good week. You probably take <laughs> your wife out for dinner. That's fifty racks a year if you can pull that off. That the point of that is, is that daily goal is mundane. You know, the and the weekly goal, yeah. probably a better one mentally to focus on because you do get a little bit of dopamine shot, you know, like I did it this week. But you got to know how to get to that goddamn thousand bucks. And it's two hundred dollars a day. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. And that's 50 on the year. And that's I mean, I, I talk about it in text a lot. But when I started my business, man, three bucks a day, 200 bucks a day, that was a that was a victory day. That was a takeout at night day, right? Because I was starting fresh. I had no customers. Yeah. I didn't have nothing, you know. And I, I grew that to something great. But I have to look at this the same way. I'm not starting off. I got to be great here. 
I got to start off just like any other business and you got to build yourself up. And that really helped me, um, you know, not being greedy. I don't know how else to say it because it, it, that's basically the skill you get out of that. Um, that and, and being disciplined and sticking to the plan and having a process and having some actual goals, not just Lambo goals, right? I need a Lambo. Like I'm trying to maintain, trying to maintain a lifestyle and make my kid have a better lifestyle. That's what I'm trying to do in the long run, right? So he don't have to work as hard as me. So I mean, you really got to sit down. That that'll help you out because that's going to make the decision for you to click a button sometimes when it is just sixty bucks. Because three sixty bucks is your two hundred, and that's very important. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing you talk about is the market. Like I'm I'm just an early. I'm the I'm the. Uh, I don't know which one. I can never figure out which one makes the best sense. But I'm the the slow moving EMA, and Professor is the fast moving EMA. And uh, I said at the beginning of the, the month, you know, was, we're starting to see weakness. And, um, you know, you were like, one more shot at the bar. But um, I, we're, we're going to see we're going to see it, you know, whether we go yeah. sideways for two or three weeks. And for me, why I'm saying that is for me, I slow down a little bit. Right. Like I'm trying to overtrade when the market's hot, not not because it's Tuesday and I'm available. It's I mean, I made myself available most days, all days, <laughs> but. Um, you you yeah, don't you well, don't want to trade like you just can't do it that way. You need to really ha that's that's the extra checks I talk about. Like find a sector that's hot. Make sure the market's kind of hot, and all that that's, all that stuff just adds up to your success. And you know the um, on market weakness, the market breadth that we talk we've been talking about for for months. Uh, well, it's worse now than when I first brought it up, and the reason for that is this run that. It's too fast. Mag seven stocks have had uh, that are just you know outpacing the sideways and down of some of the you know of the of the smaller stuff, um, and everybody focuses on you know, the Russell two thousand and and all that. Um, that one is not that useful to me. Uh, if you look at what's what's in it, a lot of biotechs in there, um, not the names that we trade and we look at. So um, I think like the Arc stocks are kind of a better barometer as far as for what we do um and uh you know because those have a good range of small mid caps mid larger whatever um so a lot of those have been have been stagnant as nvidia microsoft amd etc you know made, made this big made this big move up so um that is a kind of decision point where either the laggers are gonna, gonna catch up or you know these stocks at all-time highs are gonna pull back that's very hard to short. I don't mess with trying to short those, but um, but yeah, no. I'm, so I'm I'm with you. the The original thesis about market breadth had a reset, and so now I read the flow again on it. It's going to be a really important couple weeks um, to see how that's going to play out and and where some of our pullback targets will will line up. Yeah, I mean, I'm, to to be you always want to be critical of yourself. And the first thing I'd say is, I mean, I had. September, January, and I can sit here and gloat all day, but I didn't have the move coming that fast. So, I mean, you have to take that into account. That's where I was wrong um, and take that into your next thesis. And we have to broaden at best. I've said that for a few weeks. I mean, that's the best case scenario is we kind of broaden out. Um, so you're gonna have to be picky. Uh, worst case scenario is we just pull back and it's, I mean, we're at 480. What's four, what's 450 gonna feel like? You know what I mean? <laughs> where, where you guys was, the, 430 was like, will we get back to 430, 440 halfway through last year? Like, just confirming that level. So, I mean, if you look at the weekly chart, it that's just, that's hot. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I, that's why I value what we do, because we'll just find something that's not, um, something with news. And you're see, you've seen it all last week. Um, we talked about read the report and play the aftermath. We should have just put the little comma and news there. Because it's the same thing right yeah. now. And um, the most valuable thing I can say around that, and it's I just try to keep it as simple as possible. But when stocks run, like when they have a huge move, let's 10, 20, 30, 40%, depends on the stock. Some of these have run 100%, definitely those. I don't care what the news is or the event is. It's 80% probably going to sell off on news. It just is like news brings the attention back in. People digest it differently. They say, OK, well, it's it almost reminds them that they own the stock. 
and they just move on. They just take it from there. They don't. They now they have a new uncertainty. Um, most news, most news isn't coming out and saying, "Hey, we're just a billion dollars richer," and that's kind of what you need on an overextended chart. Is a news that says, "Hey, hey we're a billion dollars richer," and that just that's most people don't. They're like, "It's up and it's going to get news," and then they try to mentally make that news good. And you just got to see that's the wrong. It's like red hitting fifteen times on roulette. You're going to keep betting red. Like, no, black's, yeah. black's yeah. coming. Black is coming. Right. And it's healthy. And I, and I always look for that as an opportunity just to have a level. Like overextended chart, you know I don't buy stuff that's up. So what, what do I do? I pick a spot, and if it comes there, I'm going to buy it. And that's, that's how you've got to play a lot of these big names right now. Um, it is. And the, um, you know, the kind of the narrative on, on earnings, and um, I – as we enter this next earnings cycle, and I, I saw this clear as day with um, John Deere last round. So it beat, um, but you know, there's like one sentence in it that uh, the market algos pick up on, or however you want to say it, and um, and then it it sells off. And so then, like, okay, well, I'm gonna go from here. We're gonna find a spot. And on DE, it was 360. Took way the hell off. You know, back to 400, did not reach that previous. I rejected hard at that 402 level. You know, we're, we're back down again, and now we're close enough. The next ER in mid-February, uh, where the flow is going to set up that one. And then I'm going to read it again, and we're just going to, you know, kind of do this do this over again. But, um, but you know, the, the point is that um, in within the good news, market's all about narratives. It's all about stories, and there's a way – to interpret the story that can sell off even good news. The cliche on it is sell the news, but uh, but that's often how you know, things are um, are playing out right now. Bitcoin ETFs are kind of an extreme example of this. Um, I think there's some mechanical reasons why Bitcoin's selling off with Grayscale as, I don't know, 50 billion more dollars to sell. And, um, and those, that actually to me, Kind of jumping around here, but it's a little bit comparable to remember when when Elon kept selling Tesla, sure. just kept selling and selling and selling, mm -hmm. and it's like you don't want you don't want to go long while that's still going on, um, and you know by waiting you are going to probably miss the actual bottom, but that market mechanic for you to safely get back in it has to play out first, and um, and that to me is where Bitcoin is right now. We're still too far from the having for that to be the big thing in my opinion so um so you, you got to kind of let this selling play out and the fact that i mean point ain't 100 bucks yet um it bounced off my 120 area but like i said you know don't fall in love with that level I just thought it put up a fight there so uh so we kind of have more uh, more more to go um and so you know back to the stuff that's really looking great and everything's all you know, good. Like when the pullback does happen for me this round, uh, I'm not just gonna just be in buy the dip mode blindly. Um, I think you have to account for the fact that um, the pullback could keep going on a lot of these names. Uh, that's kind of what what my thinking is. Um, it's a good uncle lesson here for two seconds. Um, coin, coin. I, I'll ask it two ways because it's the same question. Yeah. Because it's the same question, but I want you to see it this way. So is coin going to stay above 120 this week? Is coin going to finish this week with a weekly doji? Because it's the same question. No, I don't think I don't think coin's going to finish above 120 yeah. this week. Yeah. I'm all about um, the green candle switch on the weekly. And yeah, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. It's not happening here. Okay. Yeah, it just... Um, it, <laughs> I mean, if you look at, and I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know why of all things, like I read crypto pretty well, because it really isn't, if you look at my history, it kind of doesn't match up, except except for the fact that like reading a commodity, I guess that's the only similarity where I have like, you know, I could compare oil prices to oil and copper to copper stocks. And, and so it's Bitcoin stocks to Bitcoin. Um, so I don't know why I could read it so well, but, but all, you know, all I saw was that um, at 120 was a spot where whales were likely to clear out 
some positions. And when you sell to close puts, it often leads to a bounce. So so them getting out of the 120p and you know all that stuff definitely bounced it. But um but that's a that's an option driven level. Like a lot of my 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 pivots are. Um you're uh you're not on a firm foundation when no. you're at an option pivot no. level. No. So um so it's it that's the 15 minute trade. Um and and when I say 15 minute trade, I don't know if this matches what what you say, but like I enter the 15 minute trade planning to trade it for 15 minutes literally. Sometimes it goes longer if I'm winning. But only if I'm winning. You know what I mean? Like like mm-hmm. especially on options like I'm I'm going to just if it's going to stagnate and I'm green, I'm just going to go ahead and get out. Um, but you know, if it just takes off, you know, three, four percent from wherever I entered, yeah, I'll I'll walk the stop up or you know whatever. But um, but that um, it's a it's a way to phrase risk. It's not a lotto. I'm pretty confident that the trade's going to work, uh, or I wouldn't enter it. But um, yeah, it's it's one where I'm not surprised that five minute candle just takes it out and just goes crashing right through that level. Uh, because it's it's options, and if if uh, there aren't you know with the option levels, you got to keep adding fuel to the, that fire to make it work. Yeah. Otherwise, if there's not new options there, it just dies. So um, so that that's where we are with with coin, and it's also the reason I traded MSTR instead this mostly this week was because it was at a, a real level instead of one of these option driven ones. Yeah, I am. Um... You know, as a million dollar option trader, 15 minute trade to me is, uh, you know, after someone calls it, I wait 15 minutes and I buy at the top and then I go complain about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's what I do. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, not for me. Um, I, I don't like the 15 minute trade because it messes with my 15 minute rule and people get them confused. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but to be honest with you, I don't bring a lot of them to the table. But if a trade is in a, a small window for me like that, it's less than 15 mm-hmm. minutes because I'm moving like 100, 500 shares in and out real quick. And I'm doing... You know, I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebrand mine. Mine's the 20-minute trade. All right, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Same concept, but I like yeah, it. I'm with you on the naming. Yeah, uh, so I like the... Um, I, I don't like to promote scalping that hard. Um but that's that's kind of how anything that I see is that much risk. That's what I'm doing. I'm I'm just taking my money in smaller amounts and putting it in and out faster and moving those individually instead right. of a large position. So I don't even well, like if it's that risky for me. That's what it's a di- it's just different. It's not two contracts, so, sell one and hold on uh, at all. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this uh, because there's a there's a kind of small cap setup that we really don't talk about in here um and mine is because like they're the ones they don't have options those are the ones that have those those 100 200 percent days news whether it's some goofy chinese stock or you know whatever those ones that just go crazy um and you don't you don't really you rarely ever even mention them so it's got to meet it's got to meet the uh, so many checks that's why I don't I, I, right, right. Yeah, it just has to work I think out. You, you you could probably find a spot. Like I'll bet your TA is good enough, or you're reading the tape. You could find yeah, a spot. Like yeah, I could enter this trade, and it'll work. Um, but it's not uh, not safe, and it's not something for beginners or even intermediate traders, probably. Um, where you can lose thirty percent share side five minutes um and that's not where we really want people to be yeah no i had one a week or two ago that i brought that yeah it dipped it dipped from the level but i kind of knew going into it i mean i had like 40 million volume in the first 30 minutes of the market it usually that was more volume than it had in like seven months (laughs) so i knew we were i just knew we were gonna three-day rule right that 40 that 40 million shares had just the biggest spot on the chart it, it point it pointed control for me my middle line it had that so we're just going to play off that number if you're in around or, or cheaper than that number you're going to be good in two days and that's why i played that one because you couldn't almost you almost you couldn't get it. if you messed it up i could just tell you hey wait you're going to sell in the morning here you know and if it was tuesday you could sell on thursday that would have been the worst yeah. and that's that's what happened with it um 
because I got stuck in a little bit of it scalping. But um, yeah, I just look for stuff that I know if you mess up, you're going to be all right. Um, but that's not going to work on the option side because I'm assuming those are going to be hot and then just die off worse than the volume does on the stock. Um, yeah, yeah, because the you're over because you're overpaying for it when you enter uh, to begin with. So you got to go even way above your entry to break even on those, just with the way the you know, the IV plays out. Um, and that's why I don't like small cap options that much to begin with. Um, yeah, no, I'm, then, I'm you know for me. I'm moving that way with the share side too. We talked about that um, before, like the um, the moving to the, the the eights to like the fifteen dollars stocks. Yeah, yeah. Because they just have better reads. Yeah, it's got to be you know it's got to be one where um, where I got some history. You know, Fubo is is stands out, um, and uh, or you know or a big thesis DNA, couple couple others, but um, in general. Yeah, I mean, it's why, I mean, in uranium, it's why it was, you know, UU, UU, you, you, um, even over UEC, which UEC ended up, has ended up being good, but there's DNN, that's the other, that's the real small yeah, yeah. uranium stock. Um, it, you know, it, it did well and everything, but, um, but I just don't, we walked away from that. To read. Yeah. yeah. It's harder to read that price point. You just, you're better off and use, um, and then option side. CCJ, of course, has had its moments too. Um, the big one, but uh, but yeah, no, I I really that's the that's the price point I gravitate towards is this this kind of eight eight to twelve dollar trade. Some of these are going eight to fifteen or more, um, and uh, or you know or twelve to sixteen, you know whatever. But but yeah, that's that's kind of the our bread and butter, and I think we'll continue to uh, to refine that. Uh, most I, of my most of my swing trades fall in that. I love the psychological flip at 10. So playing eights are great because if you get something running and you get to 10, 10 to 13 it isn't a big move in people's psychology level. It's just, you know, you're paying two or three bucks extra, but it's a huge move on the chart. It's just, the, yeah. and you see it all the time. Um, let's get into some market stuff. Um, you said you want to talk solar. I'll let you go with that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So we are, um, you know, so <clears throat> solar had um you know made a nice recovery off off lows um and then it's kind of like it's setting up for this next round of and um i have a hard time envisioning a situation where um the overall financial picture of these companies has changed very much so um so i would expect them to retest some of those lows or at least get halfway there on on some of these um some of these earnings moves so uh their their cash situation is bad for most of them and uh like i had posted the other day um the california solar and storage association has found 63 percent of its 400 members have reported cash flow issues uh california is about the best barometer for solar i think that um, that you have, it's kind of been there the longest, uh, or one of the states has been there the longest. So, um, so those can continue to struggle with cash flow, and that's um, that's a situation that's getting punished heavily in uh, the market right now. You know, Friday you had SPY and QQQ hit all time highs. All the solar stocks were were down, and they didn't go along for the ride on that. So, um, so I, I kind of expect that to. Continue, and I'd caution caution people on. We say say buy red, but you got to buy red with um, with a thesis. And solar just doesn't have a great thesis right now. Doesn't have great EA from what you told me, and uh, has neutral flow at best. So it doesn't have big push and leaps or anything. So um, I think you I think you wait. Um, it's a sector I've very well on so it's not like i'm going to just ignore it but um yeah it's uh i think we wait and it's also again just emblematic of what's going to happen with anyone with uh issues with cash right now yeah i think i mean i think they got oversold as a sector in general it was kind of against the yeah. grain sector um and then when they were picking themselves back up um the cash thing came back in so 
not reflective yeah. of the, the market or the company or even the sector in general. Like nothing's really happened in that regard. They're just on the wrong side of the trends. Um, I think, I mean, in general, you're seeing it, it, it's not just solar at this point. I mean, all of alt energy is just getting hammered. Um, yeah. Because of the, I mean, most of it is because of the cash thing. Um, EV, EV, FUD, all that stuff, alt energy FUD, is that good for oil? Is that what we're about to see? Is it that kind of cycle? And that's kind of what it seems like, just and not only oil, just anything, you know, basic, basic material side. Um, um, just, yeah. it seems like the normal, the normal cycle here. I mean, it's what happens when we hang out too long, be it. A couple of years down the road, it just kind of resets, and we're back to where we were. Uh, yeah, oil is um, it's still parked in my in my zone. You know, I, I said you, you know you don't want to linger under 70, 73 right now, um, and look into when oil breaks out. It's going to be seventy eight, eighty, and and that's where the, the stocks will take off. And uh, I think you we're going to enter phase here pretty soon where you can just kind of throw a dart at oil and do well but but even I, I never like trading like that so i think you look at which one is in the best spot that we've been at before that has the best picture and flow you get a good mix of get your mega cap and you get your smaller ones your, you know your dino or whoever um and uh even look at rig as a kind of sympathy thing and and you go and you go from there um so yeah i'm i'm with you that Oil is kind of gearing up. Um, I, I do see that in, <clears throat> I don't know why this is, but in the, in the room, um, and it's been this way, I'm not, I'm not at all picking on anybody individually because if you do this, it's, it's very common, but you know, people buy oil or they, well, the, okay. The two, the two times I get messaged about oil is when it's down and it's kind of like into the world, you know, what's happening, but why is oxy crashing and oxy's like, parked at a level where I want to buy it or after it takes off, like, am I too late to get in? Um, and, um, I think this comes from mentality that most people have with trading, which is like getting, getting that instant result, that instant, uh, payback. And, um, and I've never traded oil that way. I think, you know, oil, it's in a spot where I like it. I buy it in that zone and then I just wait it out and then it makes the move. It's why I never trade weekly options. Uh, three months minimum on option the option side into like six months or a year even more and uh and you just wait and if you want oil that's what you're gonna have to do with the 15 minute trade or 20 minute trade uh something else crypto or spy or something because oil isn't it for that no i'm on, on the one you should buy i'm just i always say buy with the big fish when i literally know who the big fish is that's the one i'm buying <laughs> just gonna yeah, put that yeah, exactly. just putting that out there um yeah no it's good i think the market in general is just going through a change um this would be good for patient for me um it's going through a change of you know you the the seven i don't know what, what are we calling them fang wang mag seven big pillar what whatever yeah. whatever it right. is whatever the hell it is those guys um those are just so far down that it seemed like a good spot to put your money and everyone did that and that's what last year's rally was and that money is looking for the next spot um and as yeah. these in, as these interest rates go down um a lot of the dividend stocks are going to start to become valuable again because the boring people that just want that small return that move to savings accounts that you can get five percent out of the the dividends are going to start paying more and the, you know they're going to start becoming a better setup for their money so i think we're going to see a road I, I think that's where your commodity shift might come from because a lot of those old timey ones have the decent dividends. Um, and then yeah. they'll, they'll start selling it as PR news, right? Like increase, and you're seeing it in some stocks now where dividends are being released for the first time or they're reaffirming them or they're doing a special one. Um, but we're going to start to see dividends increase, I think, in the next two or three years for those companies that are, are basic just to get the money back into that side of, um, you know, from this, again, the dividends being more valuable than a savings account yeah no I'm, I'm i'm definitely i'm with you there absolutely and um so so like that rotation it's going to be good to stay ahead on um because some of those charts are definitely 
just from a you know a, a forward PE metric. You know, some were trading at like twelve or fifteen, and they were over here trading Microsoft and Apple and Tesla at like fifty and seventy. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, not not that it's going to be the home run, but again, back to where we started this conversation this morning at two hundred dollars a day is, is not a bad thing. And, and um, if you um, have if you have a little bit of money, um, you know that's a good thing to do is kind of get some low interest low risk return stuff. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, and uh, I got one more on um, commodities on copper. Oh, copper sure. yeah, pulled yeah. back. Um, it, it got close to my $4 area. Um, 397, I think is where it, <clears throat> it rejected. Um, but um, so my big levels on copper, 350 and four, and it bounced at 375. Seen this before. Um, when I have two big levels and it kind of goes in the middle and then that's the spot for a bounce, that's often when you'll see a breakthrough to, um, to the upside. So that, that happened in November of last year. Um, it happened again, the smaller extent in June. Um, and then, you know, kind of, here we go, here we go again. So um, this, um, you know, where I'm looking at AA and, Senex and you know, there's going to be a number of these metal stocks. There'll all be. I don't think you're going to reinvent the wheel here. It's going to be stuff that we've talked about, but um, but there a lot of those are in a really good spot to start to load up. Thinking of a three to nine month trade. So um, so that'll be a big, big focal point for me over the next uh, next six weeks or so. I think you said Senex. That's, that's the best thing about what we do for me. It's like the, the idea for the reason why we never argue about. Like we're usually, yep, yep, that plan's great. But which one and why and where is is where we go. Like just the way we look at stuff a little bit. Because I think Senex, I don't got the chart up, but I think it's like 11 to 14 is what that read is on that. Um, and th there's some other ones. Like I like that Southern one. That one's good. <laughs> I just like 80 to <laughs> 90, 80 or 75 to 90 better. But it's just interesting how that our thesis is usually don't get debated too much. Um, but which one is going to succeed um, by our metrics is is usually the debate. So that that that's just one of the ones that stands out. Oil's that way. It was that way, too. Uh, now, But we're getting back yeah, to our levels so, on oil. But, and by the way, like um, so you, you didn't like um veil recently yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. i so i i was already in it like i was in it under 13 and like so when you said that um i went ahead and set a stop on it at 1550 and um out. and then hit that. <laughs> and, and so then so like now i'm now i'm out again now you wait and uh and you will like this one again at 13 and when you like yeah and so when 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 you like this one again then you know, we we go from there. I'll probably see, you know, sixteen C and eighteen C and twenty C leaps and all that again, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. But uh, but yeah, so that's a good that's a good example of one uh, where the flow was there. But I'm like, I'm still just gonna go ahead and take my money if this dips back down, and then it did, and then we go from there. Yeah, a lot of it. Um, use use a golf analogy because it'll be easier than baseball, but. When the wind's blowing in your face, I just wait to swing, right? And that's how I feel about market conditions. <laughs> so yeah. I'm a little like, I just, there's sometimes where I'm just like, I'm not in a bad moment, a bad mood, but I'm not in a bad mood. Um, but I'm just very, you know, like this, what's the, what's the word, P, when you're just like, um, not optimistic, Pessim I'm pessimistic about everything. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's what happens when the market breath is, breathing in my face and so a lot of times that's <laughs> that's what it is so i'm just looking the nice way to say it and i try to pound in everyone's head i'm just looking for the extra check or whatever right if it's not there it ain't there just sit on your hands all right let's act like we can pick spy here <laughs> <laughs> jesus Christ. i um no, it, it, i think i had the higher number but you it, it you, you, it. you did 483 so I'm, i don't care what you get the win no matter what um let's see how we did on the bottom you did have it going into 80, and that was kind of the question. 
four six. Oh, we weren't that bad last week. Four sixty nine eighty seven on the low. We both had four seventy one. I had four seventy one ninety nine. Man, it was real close. And you had four seventy one thirty eight. You were closer. Um, and then you were two dollars above. So yeah, I don't, actually we weren't that bad. Um, I I just really didn't see that psychological eighty break in or holding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you got? <laughs> It's um, it kind of depends on what they did with um this one twenty two four eighty C that ran from fifty bucks to over three hundred hundred and forty six thousand volume on that. Um, a lot of that of course is just going to be the people who just you know, cashed out on the win, maybe some held through the weekend or whatever, but, but I'm more interested in what, what the big money wants to roll that to. Um, that's, that's kind of the, the upside that now that reading the upside on spy and options has been, there isn't a lot like further dated. Like, so you're not seeing March and September, you know, five fifty C or something like that. Um, so it's, it's all just kind of like, thought- like incrementally, close to the vest, they roll it up. Um, so I don't know what they're doing with that. So I, I that makes the upside kind of hard for me. Um, didn't, the, didn't we have a September read that was down? Did oh we yeah, have like, it's, still, it's oh, still there. Yeah, yeah. I just want to keep that out there. I want it, I want that to be out there. It's Yeah, so it's, um, there's, uh, so there's two, there's two of them. There's, it's 920.405 and, and then there's 920.430. And 440. Um, and there's also March 440 P. Yeah. Yeah, no, not, so that's the hedge. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, that, um, uh, those are, so those are going to be pretty important numbers. Uh, everything below 400 is dead in options. I've not seen anything. Sure. There, so I sure. think that ship has sailed. Um, all right. So as far, yeah, as far as numbers, Numbers for this week. Um, downside, I'm going to say 471.57. And upside, this is like, <laughs> it's like your, your all time high charts again for me. Um, yeah, yeah. I know. I yeah, I'll say four four eighty. 484.86. So I think we fall short of 485. 484.86. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, if we're going higher, I, it's not going to stay under this 475 long, but there's a lot of earnings this week. I think 470 is unbreakable right now. So picking somewhere in there. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with these now. I'm going to go 475. 72, which is, um, I went with this one, this 20 day right here. And then the top side, I'm just going to pick a number out of my ass. Like we blow the doors off <laughs> for some reason this week. Um, let's go for, I don't want to be, I'm going to go 487, 69. Shout out, Goose. Um, yeah. It ain't stopping for some reason. Give it give it another week. Let it overextend. Um, news news might stop it, but kind of kind of going against my normal uh, my normal you know sideways here. But this market's just proven strong. Yeah, it it has, and um, so I uh, like you want to talk about. Um, DCA. I, I I started going a little bit heavy in QQQ on a three hundred four yeah, level. Three hundred two, and <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> treat it like a bill kind of thing. I mean, from you know just monthly deposits, my my debit card roundups all go into QQQ. Like you know, so it's like it's even like you know it's it's fifty cents here and seventy five cents there. But but you know over this whole time um that's done very well that has done really well and and just uh 
it um that fund in particular has always you know kind of been easier for me to to read and um so yeah the the go back to work thesis on a lot of stuff works well um we had heck we had a guy in the room who's struggling really bad and i just said why don't you just go really small take your big chunk of money and just put it in vu and uh and then learn uh and he would have he would have been up 20 percent or more oh sure that. sure really done that instead of just said just blowing <clears throat> it all so um i think for you know for anybody you want to have a plan where you can actually hold something and uh Historically, that works well for you in the market. Yeah, I pounded the table last Re- year about not being able to swing in the market. <laughs> it's a joke. Like, yeah, yeah. You got, I mean, <laughs> and it, you can never predict what you're going to get, but some of those, man, are account changing if you just pick the spot. Uh, it, yeah, a- AVGO, S- SMCI. Um, I didn't really catch NVIDIA that much uh, other than, you know, the options trades, but. Uh, but yeah, those two have done extremely well. Well, you said Microsoft too, even that. I mean, that's basic, but you probably you probably I mean, got Microsoft's a, my biggest. That's my. You probably got a crappy entry too, to be honest with you. You're right. You probably didn't get the greatest entry. It's not. Uh, historically speaking, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, so it's over half my. Sure. Half my account. Well, um, and uh, it was two eighty. Um, was my. Yeah, well, that's My what that's what that. happens when you win one. And you, um, it, you start out as a, like a five or ten percent of your account, and it grows. Yeah. To, that's what happens. That's how that works. So they, that's yeah, a, that's I the mean, the orange thing I talk make, about. Um, how you know how much do you take? Some I, I, that's why people like Apple, Microsoft. What's another good one? Those ones that kind of move slower and progressively up because they don't have to make that when do I get out of it decision like they do with Tesla or Nvidia. Yeah, Roku for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roku was a huge position of mine, but, um, you know, had to cut that just because of the history of that chart and everything. But, uh, yeah, so good stuff. All right, ready to get to work? Oh, yeah. like Yeah, I'll grab a coffee like, and, and we'll go. Like, like and subscribe and join for, look for the link. I don't know, whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All that, right. all that, all that stuff. All right. <laughs>